This video is part of a series of videos where we are going to discuss what you see on your screen. Now, what do you see on your screen? XSD, or in other words, XSD. So XSD doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot of Ds. XSD is a way that we can validate our XML. So extensible style sheet definition. It's one of three options that we have. The other two options being well-formed and DTD. So well-formed, that's a bit of a misnomer because well-formed essentially means that we trust the author to form the XML document correctly according to these rules, but we're not necessarily going to validate it. So it must begin with the XML declaration, the little less than symbol question mark and then the word XML. It has to have one unique root element. The root element is what starts and what stops the XML file. Start tags have to have matching end tags, so we can't have any start tags that are unclosed. Element names are case sensitive. All elements must be closed. All elements must be properly nested. So one element within another, we can't have uh, an element jump over another. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll take a look at some examples in a few moments. All attribute values must be quoted. Uh, so this is something that we require in, in XML. Uh, we like to do it in HTML as well, but we're not always good at doing it. So for example, I can bring up the uh, Plant Places website and show a little bit about what I'm talking about here. So we'll go right here to Plant Places. And if I control U to view source, you see that an attribute is one of these things uh, where we have a name and a value. And the rule I just mentioned said that attribute values have to be in double quotes. So good idea for HTML required for XML. Also, I talked about how open tags, like the one here, has to be closed, like the one that we see here. So open and closed tags come together. Okay, uh, entities must be used for special characters. Okay, so uh, well-formed means essentially we're not validating, but that's not necessarily a good idea, especially if we are getting data from an external source. We want to make sure that that external source conforms with our guidelines, which is why we like to use XSD. So with XSD, we're going to specify several things. We're going to specify what elements are allowed to appear in a document, and we're going to talk about what children those elements may have. We will give data types for those elements and attributes. And that's a big difference between XSD and the alternative DTD. DTD stands for Document Type Definition. A DTD will tell us the first two bullet points. It will tell us the elements and attributes that may appear in the document, and it will tell us the number and order of children. But generally, it won't tell us the data types for the content that falls between an element. So in other words, using an HTML example again, uh, we can see, if I scroll down a bit, that I have an element here called H2. And we see between those two elements is some text. So a DTD will simply say the element H2 can belong here and it can belong as a parent of this div element. An XSD will do the same. It will also tell us about the data type that falls between the open and closed tags. So a little more verbose with XSD, but it tell, tells us a bit more stuff as well. With XSD, we can also define defaults and some fixed values for elements and attributes. So the example that I'm going to be using throughout this discussion is going to be an XML definition for plant places. This, is, this part is fictional. There is no real XML input for plant places, but nonetheless, let me zoom up just a bit here. Sorry, just a moment. Uh, nonetheless, uh, if we take a look at this, this will define things like what data we're expecting to see in our XML document. Is it required? Is there a default value? Like this one has a default value of zero. I don't think I have any other defaults. What's the maximum length of the data within this element? What's the data type? Is it an enumeration? So these columns over here, the default value, the type and restrictions, these are things that we can codify through an XSD document. Okay, so why do we have schema rules? Well, a lot of times we're using this because we're using XML as a way to communicate from one party to another. That's the demonstration that I have here with this plain places XML definition. Uh, so in this case, we're saying maybe you are, you are a producer, I am a consumer, I am going to consume your data. In that case, I'm going to say that your data 
needs to adhere to these rules. The nice thing about XSD is because it is a standard concept within the universe of XML, we can write XSD, and if we write it well, we can validate the XML document before we actually do anything with the contents of that document. In other words, we don't have to read in the document, parse it, and then validate it right before we put it in a database. We can use something as simple as Notepad++ to validate a document. So this is a sample XML document. I won't get into the details yet. I'll save that for our example, which is the plant places example. And if you take a look here, you'll see that this is being validated by an XSD file called user validation XSD. And over here, this is what that XSD file looks like. Again, not worried about the syntax just yet. We'll have plenty of time to describe that uh, throughout several videos that follow this video. But take a look at this. If I change my first name to Brandon, by the way, it is Brandan, which is an uncommon spelling. If I change it and I save, no problem. We'll change it back to Brandan and save, no problem. But as soon as I enter an element that's not allowed per the XSD and I save, I get a warning. So you see that in a simple editor like Notepad++ with the XML plugin, it can do validation immediately before we have anything invested in reading this XML document. So this is common in industry. One example that I'll talk about, or one example that I can demonstrate, uh, comes from the Association for Retail Technology Standards, uh, which is called ARTS. ARTS is a division of NRF, the National Retail Federation. So NRF is in charge of setting standards on how point of sale software and hardware vendors communicate with each other, which gives a retailer some comfort to know that their hardware purchase or their software purchase adheres to these standards. If you go to NRF's website, you can see that they have a lot of schemas that are available for download, and this simply says how the uh, software and hardware vendors should interact with each other in a point of sale system. If you actually download one of these schemas, what you'll end up seeing is uh, a series of XSD files. And again, these XSD files contain rules, and the rules are what we use to number one, create an XML file, and number two, validate that XML file. So XSD, XSD, a good way to enforce the way that we communicate between parties. So uh, why XSD? I pretty much talked through this on the earlier slides. I will point out that a lot of this information I gathered from uh, w3cschools.com, so give them credit for that. Also from Professor Robert Rokey at the University of Cincinnati. Uh, he provided a lot of this information as well, so I'd like to give a little credit there as well. Just a bit to get us started on thinking about how to form an XSD. We're, an XSD, one thing that's really nice about an XSD uh, file is that it is indeed, it is uh, an XML file. So XSD is describing XML and it's using XML to describe XML. So just like a normal XML document, it is going to have that one root element. And here in Notepad++, you see that when I select the open tag, it shows me the closed tag as well. And it neatly draws some lines to show me nesting, which is really handy. So an XSD document is going to have a root element, and that root element is going to be called the schema element, as you see here. Uh, so we have a couple things we're going to say about this, a namespace, a schema location. These are details that we'll get into in a future video. And just a few more words on what's inside of an XSD. We'll have two different types. One is a complex type, and the other is a simple type. Let's start with number two, the simple type. That's easiest to describe. So a simple type, is only going to have some kind of text between the open and closed tags. It will not have other, other elements inside of it. It can have attributes, but it will not have child elements. On the other hand, a complex type can have elements in their content and also may have attributes. So let's take a look. If we look at our user, XSD, or our user XML, you see that first name is a simple type. It only has a first name. Last name is a simple type, it only has a last name. Bearcat ID, favorite shortcut, these are all simple types. But if we look at users, users has four children in this document that we see here, so that would be a complex type. If we go even further out, we can see that user details has users, users has uh, the individual simple types. So user details is a complex type 
because it is made of other elements and even child elements and then grandchild elements off of that. So simple and complex type. Simple element contains only text. And a simple element, we can define uh, several types uh, that describe the type of data that's between the element. Is it a string? In other words, is it just plain text? Is it a number that we can do math on, a decimal, an integer? Is it a simple true and false, like a Boolean? And a date or a time? Uh, these are things that we can define for our simple elements. And we will see that they will match up nicely with the definition, the XML def definition document that we've created. So what's the type? Uh, we see that a height of a plant is going to be an integer. Is it edible? Is going to be a Boolean? That's a yes or no. Sun tolerance is going to be an enumeration. It either likes full sun, part sun, part shade, or full shade. Several other examples like this. Latitude and longitude are going to be decimal types. So we see that uh, we can use these types to describe what kind of data we're going to receive. We can also define a default type, which means if not specified in the XML, or sorry, default value, if not specified in the XML, we will use this default value. So I have a couple of defaults defined in my document. Species is not required. The default value is SPP, which is just kind of like uh, indicates that it's a hybrid uh, species. Uh, so for height, the default value is a zero. So we'll get a bit of practice with that as we work through this definition document. Fixed means that this value uh, applies as is. So a fixed value means that uh, we don't care what's in the XML or maybe there's nothing in the XML. We're always going to set it to whatever value is applied to fixed. So that's a quick look at XSD. Much more to come on this subject. Stay tuned for the next series of videos where we take a look at complex types, a few more things about simple types, and also we implement this plant places XML definition, both in XSD and in an XML file. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.